Hey everyone, welcome back to another very exciting Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez. Good to see you. Happy Friday, everyone. This is going to be the last of my series for the Daily Creative Challenge. We'll have a whole new series starting on Monday. Today is the last one with me. I hope to be back again very soon with you guys. But today we're going to work on vector drawings in Photoshop for the last challenge. Man, these last two weeks went by so fast. I didn't even feel them. I hope that you guys um, have enjoyed, enjoyed them as well. Let me scroll up and look at the chat. I see Richard in the chat saying, pla uh, pass the wine. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Pass the wine, Richard. Hey, Sam, good to see you. Thank you for moderating. We have Susan and... Andreas, Laura, Matt, Devika, Robin, Nadia, Michelle, Chad, Mark, Sean. Thank you guys so much for being with me, here with me today. Hey, Anthony, how's it going? A lot of familiar faces. It's great to see everyone here. Hey, Kevin from Tennessee. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm in currently. I'm in the UK. I'm in Manchester. Um, it's a really hot afternoon. I feel like I'm in California right now. It's 90 degrees Fahrenheit here at the moment. But anyway, good to see everyone here at the chat. Um, thank you, Ted. I appreciate that. Uh, Ted is saying that it's been fantastic and super informative. No sweater today. Like I said, Robin, is 90 degrees outside. <laughs> no sweater today. Um, awesome. So let me quickly change over into my screen so that you guys can see this awesome page that you should already be familiar with, the Daily Creative Challenge page. If you haven't already, click on that big blue button so that you can get notified via the Creative Cloud for these Daily Creative Challenges. Also, if you scroll down, you'll see a link to the community chat. You can click on that and that will take you into the Discord page right up above my head there you'll see the current challenge tab and you can scroll down and look at all the different challenges that people have been working with we kind of had a double whammy yesterday where i showed you guys how to do the knockout text effect but i also showed a quick uh tip to use that same technique on this x-ray like effect and i see some people like abdullah decided to follow along with that instead totally cool it looks great abdullah good job so yeah make sure that you submit your work onto Behance, Behance, uh, I'm sorry, onto Discord. Discord, you can get to it from our behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop page under community chat, or you can click on the link or not click, type, <laughs> type on the link above my head. Cool. Um, also, make sure that when you submit your work onto Behance under create a project, use the hashtag PS daily challenge so that you can have an opportunity to be featured in the curated community gallery that you see here. You can do the same thing for XD or Illustrator on their corresponding daily creative challenges. Just use the corresponding hashtag, either AI daily challenge, XD daily challenge, or in this case, PS daily challenge. Cool. So let me just quickly take a look at the chat. Oh, one thing before I look at the chat, you have to scroll all the way down. We're in the last day today, July 31st, and we're going to do a vector drawing in Photoshop. I know that some of you may be thinking, well, isn't Illustrator better for doing vector drawings? And the answer is yes, Illustrator is um, better for doing vector drawings, but it doesn't mean that you cannot do them in Photoshop. You may not have access to Illustrator. You may not want to spend the time learning a new application. Um, so Photoshop can also help you with vector illustrations, but Illustrator will be a much, much better tool for that. But again, it doesn't mean that you can use Photoshop for vector illustrations. Um, yeah, so let me take a quick look at the chat while you guys download the getting started file. Let me just scroll up and see if I missed any messages. Thank you, Sam, for sharing my link to my Behance page. Um, I haven't already, but I'm going to be posting the projects that I work on yesterday on my Adobe live stream. I was on with Claudia from Print My Soul where we created this composite. In the day before on Wednesday, I created this composite. So if you wanna see how I made these images, make sure that you follow me on Behance because I'll be posting that project a little later on today. And if you uh, miss the streams, make sure to check out the recordings. They're here on behance.net slash live. Just scroll down to the Photoshop page and you'll see the two compositing sessions that I did. Um, but yeah, let me see if there are any other questions um love from india thank you pavan good to see you eduardo from brazil awesome great to see you eduardo 
cool. Just a bunch of people saying hello. Baby Spider-Man Vector Man. That's right, Sean. We're going to work with a little baby Spider-Man today. So this is the file that we're going to start with. It's not the best drawing in the world. It's just like a really quick sketch that I hand drew last night. And it's of a little baby Spider-Man. A lot of you probably know that I'm a big comic book fan and I'm a big Spider-Man fan. And what we're going to do today is just use basic vector tools and basic shape, uh, shapes to illustrate this in Photoshop. So that's what we're going to work with today. You're welcome to follow along with my drawing or you can use your own sketch. Totally cool. But we are going to use the vector tools in Photoshop just to make this into uh, an illustration. Um, your compositing is amazing. Thank you so much, Laura. I really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> Ted is uh, telling people in the chat to check out my Behance Lost Masterpiece Composite. It's incredible. Thank you for that, Ted. I'll quickly show what that is. If you go into my Behance page, um, let me go into my Behance profile here, you'll see all the projects that I have on here. And about three years or so ago, I was hired by Adobe to create um, this composite. I was one of five different artists. We were each assigned a different project. Um, and the purpose was to use Adobe stock images, stock images, and Photoshop to recreate a painting that was lost due to either theft or damage and this is my Composite here. You can see the images that I use here to create that composite The one on the left hand side is mine. The one on the right is the original and you can come and check it out if you like There's also an animation at the bottom of the page that kind of shows the process. But anyway, thank you so much for uh, mentioning that Ted so here we are inside of Photoshop. Um, so I hope that you guys downloaded the file because we're about to get started. And this is the starter file. And what I'm going to do is simply start creating basic shapes around my little baby Spider-Man. You can see that his head is basically a circle and his legs are just basic um, rectangle shapes. So. I can start by just using those simple shapes. I can start with the ellipse tool, make sure that white is my foreground color or fill color. And I'll do a stroke of, uh, I'll make it black and then I'll do 30 pixels for my stroke. And then I can just click and drag and I can hold on the space bar as I'm creating this ellipse so that I can adjust it accordingly. And there we go, there's his head, simple as that. And now I'm gonna work on his legs. And as I mentioned before, that is just a rectangle. I'll use a rounded rectangle and I can click and drag to create my rectangle. Again, I can hold on the space bar to move it around as I create that rectangle. And once I get the shape in there, I'll release. From the properties panel, I have options to adjust my shape. In this case, I can round the corner. So I'm gonna click and drag to round the corners. I think I'll go into 160 pixels in this case, like so. The other leg is basically the same, so I'm just gonna duplicate the layer. In Photoshop, if you have the Move tool selected, you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click and drag on the layer to duplicate it. And then I can just rotate it to match the other side, like so. And as simple as that, we have his legs. We're gonna leave the hand to the end. Let's work on the body now. So I want the body to be underneath his head and his legs. So I can go in here and use this tool here, the Curvature Pen Tool. I think the Curvature Pen Tool is a very easy to use tool compared to the original pen tool inside of Photoshop. It just makes it more intuitive to draw vector uh, shapes. So I can just start by clicking and dragging, uh, not even clicking and dragging, just, I'm sorry, just literally just clicking and you can create your, your shape like so, and then I can just hover over the line here and click to add a new point and drag to adjust it. In this case, I don't need to, but if I wanted to, I could double click on the point to create a corner. And actually, you know what? Now that I've added that corner, I kind of like it there. So I'm just going to add more shape to his body like so, just so that we just have a little more shape like that. And I can just click and drag this up, maybe move it to the side. It's totally up to you what you do with your little Spider-Man or whatever drawing you decide to create. But in my case, he has his little hand sticking out like so. Super, super cool. Let me take all these shapes. I'll click on the one on the bottom, hold the shift, click on the one on top and press Control G, Command G on the Mac to put them into a group so that, I, so that I can hide all the layers at the same time and we can see the drawing. Let's work on his eyes now. So again, with the Curvature Pen Tool selected, I'm just gonna click 
on these corners here like so it doesn't have to be perfect once i have my shape i can go back in here and click on the blue line and drag to create a new shape like so if i want to create a corner i can double click here and you see how it creates that point i'm not sure yeah i think i like the sharpness here on top it makes them look a little more like spider-man maybe click and drag another point in there just to give it more of a curvature in there i could also double click in here to add another point and just create that little little shape there to create his, his eye like so and i think this looks pretty cool and you can keep adding points if you like to make his eyes a little more stylized totally up to you now that we have the shape i can once again duplicate it by holding alt on windows option on the mac and click and drag the eye to the other side uh, press Control t command t to transform right click and select flip horizontal so now we have his other eye I can now take both of these eyes and put them just above his head. So I'm going to select both by holding the shift key and clicking on those layers. You can see now that they're both selected in blue. And I can press Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, and the left bracket key. That's the key next to the letter P to move those layers down. And I'm going to move them down above his head. Once they're above his head, I'll press Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac, to make them into a clipping mask. So now the head. Uh, the, the head will control the visibility of those eyes and I can now just move the eyes accordingly see that see it makes it look, it look kind of looks like he's turning his head so I can just place them any way anywhere that I like so maybe something like like that I think that looks pretty cool we'll take a quick break here and let me check out the chat because I haven't been paying too much attention so let me make sure that there are no questions let me scroll up. I see a lot of comments. Um, oh, it's just people telling me where they're from. We have Michael from South Florida. I used to go to um, Fort Lauderdale all the time. Beautiful area. Oh, cool. We have um, Graham from South Africa. Hey, Carol. Good to see you. Uh, hi, Ferry. Good to see you guys. Just a lot of people saying hello. Thank you so much for joining the stream. Cool. Awesome. It looks like we have no questions. Uh, we, Michael is in Weston, Florida. Awesome. Cool. So now that we have his eyes, his head, his body, and his legs, we now need to work on his hand. So again, I'll disable this group so we can work on his hand. And what I'm going to do is, again, click on the curvature pen tool and just double click here to start a point. So it's a sharp point, And I'll just loosely follow his hand. I don't need to be perfect. I can always come back and refine my drawing, but I just need to get the basic shape in there like so. And once you have the basic shape in there, what you can do is just bring down the opacity so that you can see the drawing beneath and then just start clicking on these points and start trying to better match the shape of the hand like so. So I'm just creating these points here just to make them look more like a hand, like so. And I'm gonna have to fix that in a moment, but that's okay, I don't need to fix it now. And there we go, we're getting his hands in there. Now, if you get these points here, the sharp edges, what you can do is go into the options bar and under this drop, then you can select a different type of a corner, like so. So if that helps, you can use that corner. This is the one that we had before. Another thing that you can do is if you like the spiky edges, but you don't want them to stick out so much, you can come in here with the, uh, the sorry, that's not the right drop down. This drop down here, you can come into the convert to point tool, click on that, and then just adjust the point so it doesn't stick out as much. Totally up to you how you adjust it. But anyway, this is how you would create a point that is not so sharp like that one so you, ju you can just adjust it any way that you want so maybe something like this and when you're done you can bring the fill opacity back up um, disable this and then just go back into the curvature pen tool make sure that you don't have a fill so I'll select the fill click on this icon to remove the fill so there's no fill just a stroke and I can come in here and draw these fingers like so. So that's one finger there. 
And of course you can spend all the time that you need to make sure that you make it look the way that you want. And actually I didn't want to close that so I'm just going to go into the white arrow tool and just move it on its own like so. And then I can come back with the curvature pen tool and just draw the other side like so. And then just move this point accordingly. So you get to decide how you draw the hands. I'll enable this again and just make sure that everything matches as best as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect, but this is more or less what you would do. Cool. So make sure that you spend some time with your drawing trying to get it look, look in the way that you want. If I enable everything else, you can see what we have here. And actually for this hand, it looks like we don't have a fill. So let me add a fill to the hand. There we go. And let me make sure that I take my hand and the fingers. So I'll put them into a group. Control G, Command G on the Mac. I'll call this group hand and I'll move it up. You can hold control and the right bracket key. That's command and the right bracket key on the Mac to move the currently selected layer or group up the layer stack. So there it is. And now I can just adjust this hand any way that I want. Maybe I can rotate it and I can just better position it in the drawing just to get a better design. Cool. So now what we need to do is make sure that we add some color into the image. And what you can do now is just simply open up, uh, I'll call this group body so that I know what each group is. I can open up the body group and maybe I can just work on the head. With the head, I can just click on the properties panel to bring up the shape details. In this case, I can use a color and just fill it with red. Or I can make maybe make um, the uh, black Spider-Man, the one with the symbiote suit, or I can do like a dark gray for like a Miles Morales type of Spider-Man, whatever, whatever you guys wanna do. It's totally, totally up to you. Um, in this case, just so that it stands out more, I'll use the red. And you can go in there and do the webbing if you like. In this case, I don't necessarily want to do webbing and I want to keep everything simple. Um, but you can definitely do the webbing. Then you can go into his body. So we'll make his body, we'll make his body blue. So this is his body and we can just make it blue. And we can make his legs red as well. I'm just double clicking on the, on the vector thumbnail and I can select the color. And I can also make his hand red. Like so. You can use whatever combination. Actually, no, his hand should be blue. Let's make his hands blue. Like so. Whatever combination of colors that you like. And also, really, really cool. In day number one, I showed you uh, guys how to bring back the old um, the old um, shapes that are found in older versions of Photoshop, but they don't, they're not on by default. Let me show you what I mean by that. You can use that for this project. If you go into Window shapes you can make sure that you enable the legacy shapes and more option and that will bring up this folder and whenever you go into the shape tool after that this tool right here custom shape tool from this drop down you have these cities folder you'll see it inside of the legacy shapes and more folder inside of that there's a 2019 shapes and you will see this cities folder. So I can click and drag one of these cities on here. Um, uh, I'm sorry, just select one of those cities. And then since I have the shape uh, custom shape tool enabled, I can click and drag to create a city. See that? Like so. And I'm just gonna make my little city here. And the reason that it looks like this is because if you look at the properties, I have a fill and a stroke of 30. So I can just, um, get rid of my stroke and just have a fill like that one and I can move it around maybe something like this just gotta get some buildings in here I think that looks pretty cool and maybe I don't know if I like the black uh, background black so maybe I'll make it like a dark blue or something maybe something like this and I can bring the opacity down of those buildings Something like that. So now I have my little Spider-Man swinging into the through the through the city there just by using those custom shapes. And if you want to, you can draw a little spider. And you know what? Maybe somebody in the chat knows, but I don't know if there's a spider shape inside of the um, 
custom shapes. Do you guys know if there's a shape? It's a, if there's a spider in here, um, let me see. We have trees, forests, lakes, leaves, cactus, roads, uh, people, emotions, landmarks, cities, buildings, aircraft, vehicles, vehicles. Definitely not a farm animal. Um, flying animals, aquatic animals, nothing. Insects. Okay, maybe here. Oh yeah, we have some spiders here. Cool. So maybe we can just click and click on this one and then just add a whole new spider here. Actually, let me make sure that uh, shape is selected and it is. And there's my little spider there. Let me bring that up all the way on top of the layer stack here and make this black and I can distort it to match my Spider-Man if, it, if it'll let me. There we go. Oh, I think I rotated it too much. There we go. So that's going to be our, our little Spider-Man. Something like that. But now we have the Spider-Man um, by using the custom shape tool inside of Photoshop. It's one of those legacy folders. Remember, if you don't have the legacy folders enabled, make sure that you enable them. For today's challenge, I would love to see um, what you guys create using either this drawing or your own drawing. Again, remember that you can submit your work onto um, Discord. And the way that you get to Discord is by going into behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Click on the community chat link or you can click on the or not click. I keep saying click or <laughs> type the link right up above my head and that will get you into our Discord page, which is this one here. Make sure that you click on on current challenge and you can submit your work. Awesome. Awesome work so far i see a lot of things here uh that are really really good thank you so much if you've submitted if you haven't already you can still do so even after the challenge you can continue submitting onto discord again remember to submit all your work to behance.net create a project follow the steps if you don't know what i'm talking about watch the welcome screen i showed the welcome stream have you guys noticed that i keep using the word scream for stream almost the entire time i've done this uh, daily creative challenge but anyway um make sure that you watch the entire first stream and um i showed how to go through the process of creating a project and the important thing is that you should use the hashtag ps daily challenge so that you can have an opportunity to be featured in the creative challenges commun curated community gallery so very very important so make sure that you do that. Also, um, every time I click on the link, JR Freeze as well. <laughs> yeah, Sean. See, I keep telling people to click on that link above my head and then they pause the video and they don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, if you don't know who I am, you can follow me on YouTube. The YouTube channel is Photoshop Training. Oops, there you go. I was playing my video. Photoshop Training channel on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, uh, JR from PTC which is the same handle that I have on my Behance profile. You can check that out. You can check out all the other Adobe live streams that I've done. It was so wonderful being with you guys here today. Thank you for all the familiar faces. Uh, Sean, we got Claudia from Print My Soul now in the chat. Thank you so much. Clarissa, Marsha, um, Sig, Sam, of course, Jade, Richard, thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure hosting you for the last two weeks. I hope that I get to come back and show you how to uh, come back to an, and do another set of daily creative challenges soon. Um, cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure that you stick around for more Adobe Live right after me. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.